Hey, this is Ryan from another goddamn horror podcast coming to you from Portland. And Oregon. Graham. And Graham. What's up, Graham? Jonas. Jonas, how's it going? I'm here too. I'm here, here too. I'm here, here too. Uh, we just wanted to give you a little information that we have cool stuff that are, isn't just our amazing podcast. We have we, so uh, much more cool stuff. We have so much more cool stuff. We have a um, Patreon. Have you guys checked the out the Patreon? Army of the Goddamn. Army of the yeah. Goddamn. Do you want to be a we fucking? We sold out, man. We have the Patreon. We have a Patreon. We, uh, you know, you know, we're apparently just capitalists at our heart. And um, <laughs> so I want you to go uh, over to Patreon. Check it out. It's a uh, AGHP, as in another goddamn horror podcast. AGHP six 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 number of the beast at Patreon. So uh, yeah, AGHP six 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 number of the beast at Patreon. We also have uh, the Gore Store over at teespring.com um, with featured products such as the Triskel Destroyer sweatshirt, um, some classic AGHP logos, some sweatpants, and a pillow. Can you wear those sweatpants on the subway in New York? Is that is that cool? Is that uh, it is that... now legal to wear these sweatpants in New York subways? That's right. I need to have one of my friends that can fill out the sweatpants better wear the sweatpants and do them and and do them proud because I wouldn't sweatpants be able to. and nunchucks are now allowed in New York. <laughs> Listen, Sweet. there you have to have a nunchuck license in New York to carry nunchucks, and I'm really pissed off that I don't have a nunchuck <laughs> license. I like I knew <laughs> that you had to have one, and now I don't have that, and you've reminded me. And it angers me that I do not have one of those things. I will tell you what I do have, though. I have the link to our link tree, which really? is where all of our shit is at. Like, so if you didn't get those other two, you can go to link tr. So that's l i n k t r dot e e slash a g h p six six six, and you can find all of our stuff, all of our old episodes. You can find our Patreon link. You can find our our Teespring link. You can find all sorts of cool shit. And uh, that one again, Linktree does the weird, lo- the weird ones. L i n k t r dot e e slash a g h p six six six. And we appreciate everybody for checking us out. Get ready for the episode. Start some fires and break some glass, will you? From the darkest corners of the podcast dungeon. You have come across another goddamn horror podcast with Graham Fay, Jonas Barnes, and Ryan Danley. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another goddamn horror podcast. Still singing it, guys. You like that? You guys I, I love you know it. Uh, it's good. I'm, I'm yeah, digging it. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a songbird. You know, I, uh, I just have those nice, crisp, clean pipes. You know. <laughs> um, uh, welcome, everybody, to another goddamn horror podcast. I am Ryan Danley, coming to you from... Um, I'm so fucking tired of summer. Like my whole life, I've been a summer guy, but it's like a hundred degrees the past two days here in yeah. Portland, and I'm just like, and you know, it's cool because it's not like humid and it's 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 a livable 100 degrees, but I'm just kind of over it. I uh, I'm on you know, I'm too fat. I'm on too many pills. You know what I mean? Like I just can't. I just can't. I, I just can't handle fucking this heat anymore. Welcome uh, to the dark side, buddy. It's fucking I, what like eighty. It's eighty five degrees today, and it felt like a hundred because of our humidity. And like for whatever reason, in New York, it's just got this sweaty, stinky cloud hanging over us that just won't go away, and it's just continuing to be hot. We had like a little bit of wind for a little bit, but and it was like cool. But today? then it's just been fucking hot. Yeah, today was 85. I didn't wake up until 2.30, but when I went outside, it was gorgeous. No, no, it, was, like it was like 75, sunny. Oh, dude, wind. It not, was like one of the best days I've seen. Not this morning when I left for work, man. And well, then also yeah, even was... yesterday, too. Yesterday was gross, too, before it fucking rained. And it was just like... I didn't I, leave the house yesterday. I don't, dude, I don't blame you. <laughs> I feel most days I feel like that's appropriate. 
um this is uh, this is these are always fun these intros because we don't have the guest here because uh uh when we interview like um, a little behind the scenes when you interview like somebody like really really i'm a little more at ease yeah but when you interview somebody <laughs> when you interview somebody who's uh a, like on a little bit more of a schedule like they only give you a certain amount of time like a lot of our amazing guests will just say oh yeah we'll just do this and we'll just roll but some people are a little bit more like scheduled in and uh and this guest today, those are called guests that have po- uh, PR representatives. Yeah, those guests are. <laughs> yeah, they the PR representative. Um, it's always whenever got I, thirty minutes, and then they got to go to their next fucking interview. Like, <laughs> exactly. I don't exactly. know why the PR. And if they're not there, Burr, I'm taking but... it out of your ass. <laughs> yeah. uh, first of all, we love PR reps. Okay, we do. Like, we love, we do. straight up do. Oh, Amy from Adam Splitter. She'll be on the show at some point. Amazing. One of my favorite people. Fucking uh, dude, John Freeman from Napalm. Love yep. him. He's the one that actually hooked us up with this guest that we're yeah, going to talk about right now. They're great. It's just Nikki. the. Just, uh, Nikki yeah. Law. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I, you know, I mean, what a cool job. It's just something I like I probably should have done if I wasn't so busy in my 20s, you know, um, bleeding on a dirt parking lot behind a bar. And, you know, but <laughs> dude, it's, listen, it's... I, when I talk to John, you can tell that he's just like, he's like, listen, we got this time. We got this time slot. Can you do it? And if I'm like, no, he's like, fuck. All right, we'll try another one. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, um, but we um. Um, but we know I love dealing um, with those folks and they have a good job and they, and they, they do a hard thing and keep it that organized for, for them folks. Um, Got all the love in the world for them, man. They rock. Yep. And this just isn't, I promise you PR reps, that this just isn't us kissing your ass. For, Not even uh, bit, more, no. more, more access. Um, but we have a, we have a really awesome guest today. So um, we'll probably turn that over here in just two seconds. Do you want to, you want to give a little background on our guest? Um, Jonas? Yeah, yeah. So I actually, this is kind of funny. I reached out to, um, I don't know if you guys remember our Guar episode when we talked to, to Pustulus. Yes. Um, and that was actually from uh, the PR rep that I was talking to before. And he kind of is always cool to give us a, you know, throw us a guest, especially that fits within our little motif. And the one that we got today on this episode uh, could not fit our vibe anymore if he tried. Um, it's horror punk uh legend um wednesday 13 former Hell member yeah. of the murder dolls uh just fucking horror punk to the extreme um and uh, you know as as we said we're recording this after the fact but uh he fucking rules he's great yeah, we're so, very cool you know sometimes when we do this we don't actually know how the interview is gonna go so we're just guessing so we're, like most of the time we're just full of shit but when we <laughs> when, when we're, when we're recording we're it, for the best but when, but when we or we you know we can be honest when we record the intro after the interview so yeah. um so we're being sure. alert wednesday 13 fucking rocks yeah hey. you're 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 in for a great conversation with uh with a uh, with a true uh a true artist and musician and a great person so um please um Stay tuned for Wednesday 13. So thank you for coming on to the show. Wednesday 13. How you doing, man? Doing great. Doing Alive. great. That's a good start. Yeah, that's true. Over in La- waking up. So, so you're over in Los Angeles, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. So uh, we uh, we wanted to have you on because you have a new album coming out, um, coming out October 7th. Am I right? That is correct. So horrified, right? Yes. Very awesome. I just so, want to jump in real quick. I've been listening to uh, the single "You're So Hideous" a bunch lately, and it's really good. Thank you. I love Thank that. You. It's catchy. It gets stuck in your head. It's one of those like it's really wow, catchy. Yeah. Wow. So. I love it. Well, that's what like honestly, that was one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on. Obviously, another goddamn horror podcast. That's exactly what we're into. I feel like if there's anybody that's gonna be like our fucking people, it's gonna be you. Like so, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's all and we're and we're talking here today. This is uh this is the 36th birthday of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two. My favorite. Oh, awesome. Oh, wow, that's hell great. yeah. <laughs> that is great. Dude, throwing out the Texas Chainsaw Massacre trivia right in the beginning. Yeah. And I like, I like that you go with two as your favorite. That's it is, it is. I, I can't it argue is. that either. Like I, I go with one, but two is so fucking good. <laughs> I'm out in my, I'm out in my, my our band storage area, kind of rehearsal man cave. I got a Texas Chainsaw Massacre original poster right where I'm pointing right. Oh now. yeah, More yeah. Way, next to a trick or treat poster, Sammy Kerr, Death the False Metal. There you go. 
yeah. love it. <laughs> so you've been, um, dude, you've been in the game for a while, man. You started off, um, you started off, I, I mean, as far as probably, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you started off being known as a part of the Murder Dolls. Yes. Way back when. And then yeah, uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of where it started for the, like, for the world to kind of see me. As far as, like, before that, I was doing, I mean, I started, I've been doing stuff. The band that led up to Murder Dolls was my band Frankenstein Drag Queens from Planet 13, which is a full-on horror punk yeah it's uh so rad that, name too that's an amazing. awesome name yeah, one of the best name. names of all time yeah <laughs> really. easy yeah we tried to make a name that could never fit on a billboard and it never did uh, <laughs> i love it love it and uh but that started in 96 and then you've got my band before that maniac spider trash that was a sort of a horror weirdo theatrical thing that started in in 93 so uh i've been doing this I, I turned 46 last week and i've been doing this pretty much since i was 15 years old so and and it's always been somehow imagery with horror somehow inspired in it and i just uh that's what i do did that's you awesome. uh did you grow up uh like myself and uh, like misfits and scooby-doo and stuff like that and carry that into your life Believe it or not, I tell people all the time, it blows their mind. Uh, my horror influence never, ever came from the Misfits. I never listened to them. I didn't listen to the Misfits till probably the late 90s, and that was the newer Misfits. I think I heard them that first before I heard the older Misfits. Now, Danzig Solo is a total different thing. I had listened to that and, and, knew, and knew that. Um, but as far as my horror influence, it strictly was from within me and... Sure. And Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is my hero, yeah. my idol. He's the reason I look this way. I blame him. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that was pretty much the thing. When I when I saw Alice do like Dead Babies and I Love the Dead and Welcome to My Nightmare, that was my favorite. But he didn't always stay in the nightmare. You know what I mean? And I was right. like, there was a band that could just always be horror 24-7. And that's right. where I started my thing. This is this is a funny side note because I'm actually at my mom's house right now in Washington State, and it's funny that you bring up Alice Cooper because Alice Cooper Welcome to My Nightmare Tour is technically my first concert oh, wow. because I was in my mom's belly as that concert was happening. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was raised on rock, man. I was raised on that stuff. I was raised on all those things, especially like the stuff like Alice Cooper, like that was, that was our fucking jam when I was growing up, you know? It's so still my jam. I'm still growing up. And it's Absolutely. Still yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I was talking about that just yesterday. Like that Alice Cooper is to this day, one of my, one of like, one of those people that I actually like just idolize in music. Um, very yeah. few idols left, but he's one of them, man. He's been a, he's been a close friend of mine for, for years now. He did the intro on our last album um he's the reason like i like i said he's the reason i do what i do and if you listen to our new song hideous i think that's 100 percent alice cooper's song um yeah it's like, it's like you can uh, hear it yeah that's when i when we first did that i was like whoa this is like uh you know a uh explicit version of poison because i say and and i think alice cooper probably has my favorite uh musician cameo in a movie uh in oh, yeah. wayne's world <laughs> oh yeah i thought you were going to say that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Prince of Darkness, where he played like a zombie <laughs> bum, which was my No, I, I like Wayne's World when he's like telling the history of the yeah, the, yeah. the drug that shit is great. Walk really walk a. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so did, you ever, did you ever meet Alice Cooper's guitarist, Artie? Artie? I don't, which, what lineup was he from? I know a lot of his band guys. He was from, I, he was from, uh, from an earlier lineup anyways yeah yeah i, I, don't, I, grew, I, I grew up I, around that guy so yeah i know his former band uh i mean his his, his band he has right now they're really good friends of mine i know a lot of those dudes but i don't think i know Artie. he's from the he he's a little older he's he's uh, yeah. my dad so. so i wanted to jump into this what kind of horror influences do you have like from the film side of things because obviously alice cooper welcome my nightmare we're talking like musical horror right there for sure but yeah. like uh film wise what, what kind of inspirations you got out of that man it's it's everywhere you know it's like it's like uh, i'm such a fan of so much stuff you know i mean there's the classics there's the you know the universals and the black and white stuff you know which was a which was an influence as well and and the uh kind of the imagery of the band a little bit sort of the black and white makeup i think always kind of represents the old classic the universal monster stuff even though it's called corpse paint or black metal makeup i don't know it's just to me it's just horror movie makeup 
Um, <laughs> but but I draw from everything, man. I mean, you know, like I mean, I I grew up watching. I got to see Nightmare on Elm Street when it was brand new. I got to see Chainsaw Two when it was brand new. Uh, you know, so those are some of those are my favorite movies. The eighties sort of stuff are my is my favorite. Um, so I really draw a lot from that. But there's there's so much stuff, man. I mean, it's it's you know. I draw from from the characters, from your your single villain characters, from your Freddy Kruegers to Leatherface to Michael Myers, and then you know then I like weird movies like Race with the Devil that and and oh, yeah. and, uh, and, yeah, and the Devil's Brain, you know, just some of the weird old '70s satanic movies, and uh, just there's 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 so much stuff uh, that I that I can draw from. So I've never really ran out of of things to sing about. I've definitely wrote about zombies and texas chainsaw more than more than twice on my albums for sure dude i love that um i actually have two hot take questions for you on horror films right. and this is one first one graham is gonna love this one uh halloween three season of the witch thumbs up or thumbs down thumbs up yes oh yeah yes <laughs> you're one of our people <laughs> love it. we're doing a new video in a couple weeks and uh and that's we're doing kind of a little tribute to that. So, uh, oh, yeah. dude, we get to Even melt better. his brains with the set. Yes. Of music, so, uh, <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> All right. Second hot take question. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new, gen the next generation, thumbs up or thumbs down. That's the, I mean, there's so many of them. That's the, that's the one with the, that's, that's the, the Matthew McConaughey one. You know what? I thought he was great in it. He was All right. a in it. Now yep. is the great movie. I, no, I didn't really, I'd have to watch it again. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I didn't really give it much of a chance. I kind of thought, eh, uh, just cause to me, I mean, you know, the first two were my favorites and, you know, I thought Leatherface was cool. Um, but I did, I did like Matthew McConaughey's part. I thought it was so cool just to see him go off. Yeah. What you would normally see him do when I think what's the line he says in that he's like, he goes, I got a mind to bash your goddamn head in or something. <laughs> like that. I'm like, whoa, yep. <laughs> whoa, Matthew, slow down. That was Matthew McConaughey going full Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, when he did yeah. that movie. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all right with me. So, I mean, it was entertaining for, for that alone. So, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's okay. So I will, I won't give it, I'll give it a thumbs up for that. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. So uh, with what you've got going on, you've got the new album coming out in October and yeah. the stuff that I've heard from it so far has been fantastic. Um, like you've, I've actually been a fan of pretty much everything that you've been put out. Like it's your style of music, your style, your style of punk, especially is right up my alley. And, um, what, so you actually, I just uh, saw that you had a tour announcement that just dropped. looks like you're going to be coming to New York, uh, in it's October, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, our tour begins September 4th. It begins out here in, uh, LA and, uh, it's six weeks throughout the U S um i'm not sure when that date is in new york i think it's maybe at the end of september first of october uh but that tour is september 4th to october 23rd uh in the states and then uh and then we head straight over to europe and we begin a uh four-week tour as support for ministry so oh, uh, wow. awesome yeah, so that's wow. uh really looking forward to that so uh so yeah we basically two weeks from now we leave for 12 weeks into rock and roll land so, hell yeah talk about somebody it. who's really like al jurgensen has really i mean he's just stayed true to who he is he's like al. They, he's yeah, another yeah al. yeah and he's oh. just so and his and he stayed like it's it's nice also to see like guys from that generation not grow up and to be like sort of like weird rednecks yeah, you know what i mean like he's, he's, he's weird all right well, well he's well, weird but for he, for he, sure <laughs> i think he's normal and yeah. the other people, the normal <laughs> people are weird. So, um, like, no, he's a, he's a, I'm a big fan. Of, I've always been. I haven't, fan. I haven't met Al. I, I met Al a long, long time ago. I don't know if he'll ever remember because we're probably both wasted. We actually met on the side of the stage watching Alice Cooper and I was singing my lungs out and I heard someone louder than me beside of me. And I was like, and it was Al Jorgensen and he just put his arm around me and we just drank and watched Alice Cooper. That's awesome. Uh, I don't know. That's if pretty he'll, rad. He'll, if he'll remember that. He may remember that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I know his, uh, his drummer Roy very well. He played keyboards and did a bunch of cool stuff on the, on our last album. And he's my neighbor. He lives like five minutes from here. So, so uh, we're super excited to go out and do a, do a support tour with ministry. I mean, they're one of the, 
legendary bands from that era that that did it Legends. the best let did it yeah. the best and, and are still doing it the best you know them yep. killing joke i lead the game in my book now yeah, are you headlining are you headlining the u.s legs yes yes yeah the, the u.s tours uh it's, i'm titling it uh it's the second leg we did an earlier tour uh earlier this year and uh i'm calling it 20 years of fear because 20 years ago this year is when murder dolls uh first debut album came out that's when people first like you said first heard of me um so i'm just and i've got you know we're about to release our ninth wednesday 13th record so you got nine wednesday records two murder doll albums uh you know that's plenty enough material to get through a hour and a half set on tour so uh for uh, sure yeah so um the, the first do you know tour, who you're bringing out with you or do you have ideas of you know, support we, we don't have support bands on this tour. The last tour we did, we had locals uh, open up the shows just because it was financially better for us. We sold more tickets that way. It was, um, and uh, so we just kind of carried on with the, with the same thing with this. With That's this super cool. I love that. That's really cool for the local bands too, well, yeah. to be able to hop on a show like that. As, yeah. as I work at a, a small club, you know, here in New York, and uh, it's, it's always fun to see stuff like that. I love that. So financially it works out better i mean because if you're bringing three out of town bands in and no one promoted the show you're kind of fucked you know and yeah sure. for sure you know yep. and if, if you got three locals that that sold 150 tickets on top of your 200 tickets you know you got a packed show and everybody's happy yep and 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 it's promoting local scenes and i mean yeah. like yeah, for local bands to become big bands, they need to get eyes yeah. on them. That Especially, helps. Yeah. So if they so if they open for somebody, yeah, locally, that's a that's a. Uh, so I always try to make it for the. I actually lately, in the past few years, I've been buying tickets to shows where I don't care about the headliner at all. I just go for the <laughs> openers. Right. Right. No, it's, it's worked out great. It works out for us. It works out for the locals. A lot of the bands that open up for us are fans and stuff, so they get to play with us. So I remember doing the same thing, you know, when I got to go open up for some of my bands, you know, favorite. I, I got to open up for uh, for Guar. Uh, I got to open oh. up. I got to open up for Fear. I got to open up for. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the Misfits, the new version of the Misfits. I think that's when I started listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> that makes uh, sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Uh, yeah, man. Which like the, which iteration of Fear did you open up? Uh, that would have been in ninety nine. So I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with their whole. I just know them. You know, I know the sure. earlier early stuff. Uh, but a good friend of mine had booked the show, and he's like, he put Frankenstein drag queens with with Fear, which was great. And I know Lee Ving loved this. That's uh, rad. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a cool thing too. We have, I remember Guar loved us as well. I got in a fist fight on stage with somebody in a dress, and they thought we were great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love God, that. I wish I was there. That would have been like oh, that would have been, been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there's that, nothing uh, like that, the band fighting people. That's always the best. And like I was a little hardcore growing up. Yeah, white nurse's dress. He can't. Yeah, the, but like at a at a nurse's dress and like some theatrics. Man, that's a that's a memorable moment. Yes. Graham, what were you gonna say? Uh, oh, I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. Oh. Well, I, I, said, I wanted to throw this out there because it looks like the venue that you're playing in New York is the Brooklyn Meadows, which I think used to be the Paper House, I think is what it was. Um, it's a Williamsburg venue. And dude, I was looking at like where you were playing and stuff, and that venue is going to be awesome for New York, like for your show especially. Yeah. But I had a question because I know you're from L.A. Do you have like if there's if there's an L.A. venue that like you could just pop into just for, for like fun to play at like what would be a favorite la venue the whiskey's been my been my my place the venue treats me awesome we we i probably played there almost every year since 2002 beautiful uh, sometimes twice a year um and that's sort of like my little home place i mean i'm not originally from la i've been here i've been living here since 2010 i think is when i kind of started migrating here but i'm originally i'm a i'm from north carolina so i'm i'm definitely more of a country boy than a than a la guy yet maybe right years it'll rub off on me but i still i still got the sticks in me yeah you got that you got the accent there too you oh, still yeah. got the, you still got that country <laughs> in for sure i do i'm andy griffith all the way <laughs> <laughs> all right well you think uh you think you're down for answering the sinister six there wednesday let's do it all right and graham all right off to you all right, first one, Freddie or Jason? Freddie. 
I could see that one coming. (laughs) He dressed dressed better. Yeah. (laughs) He does dress. He had better one liners. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely had those. He had one liners. Yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) What's the difference between thriller and horror? Thriller and horror. Well, thriller was a Michael Jackson album. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, okay, the answer to the question thriller. Thrillers, uh, I mean, is this like a is this like a uh, a question that like dictionary? These are all, these are no, all just opinion. opinion yeah. yeah, these are well, all opinion. I mean, I just remember going back in the video store and seeing the thriller section, and then be next to horror. So I would see more like the the serial killer type kind of on the edge of your seat kind of what's murder mystery thing. That's more of the the thriller kind of uh, stuff. But uh, uh, I don't know. And then horror is well, blood guts and fire trucks. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we had Brian Usna on uh you know legendary director um society and things like that and he said his answer was very simple he said bodily fluids. That's what he said. <laughs> there you um, go. What horror movie influenced your taste the most? Oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh I said two, but the the one and two kind of go hand in hand to me. That family is they're my favorite family of all time next to the monsters and the Adams family. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> they're they're my favorite. Uh I've somehow managed uh to be in bands with guys where at some points I would look around and go, man, I I really have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family <laughs> as my band. I think I have at some point collectively had had people that reminded me of that. And we just and we kind of function like that. We don't we don't kill or eat people, but we do everything else. That's awesome. Um, if you could erase one movie from existence, what would it be? Oh, oh man. Oh, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, this one's always the, this one's yeah. always the stumper. So yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, you know, I've always tried to to find something good about a movie, whether it was, you know, I, I, instead of just going, movie sucks. I don't like to say stuff sucks. I don't like to even say music sucks. I just say, I don't like it. Um, but there's no movie I can really think that just, that just made me, let me take that back. There's some, I'm thinking there's something that made me, that made me <laughs> mad. You know what? I, I wasn't a big fan of, of Freddie versus Jason. I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't like it. You're Ooh. gonna be. You're in good company with me because I. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was, I I was wanting something so much better, and I'm on the soundtrack for that with Murder Dog. <laughs> I, was, I was so excited because I was like, "This is my first horror movie soundtrack." I love Freddy, love Jason. This is kind of cool. Maybe they'll make it cool, like you know, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. But, sure. I, but no, I did. I didn't like. I didn't like Freddy Krueger doing commentary to the camera. Every hey, maybe we'll go. Like I was like, what? Yep. Is, <laughs> it's just a bad movie and, oh. and the thing is, is and i'm like you like i don't really love hating especially horror movies like i have a big people are like oh the acting was terrible and i'm like what what are, what are you talking about like you know what i mean like this is horror right. that's not what this is about <laughs> and you know not that there can't be great acting in horror movies but that's not the you know that's not the precipice of the whole thing no. like, um um but like the, it was just a wasted opportunity you know what I mean? like it, it's something that we had all talked about for so many years for a long time you know what i mean like it was like <laughs> yeah. well, who would win between jason i mean it was this whole thing and they had talked about it for so many years and like that if it would have been great there would have been more versus exactly <laughs> yeah so i think i think that might be a uh, opinion kind of across the board not that it should never been made but maybe it should have just been made better yep better answer for that all right that's a good one um are ghosts real are ghost real? Uh, there's something going on out there. Ghost, spirits, something. There's there's definitely another uh, 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 dimension of, of things. I, I suffer from these things called night terrors, which are, uh, they kind of come and go. And I actually had one last night. And uh, oh, yeah, it was, it's one of those ones where like, you're just falling asleep and you're just, you're just kind of drifting off. And you're like literally seeing yourself in the same position. And you'll just, I like, in my dream last night, I just saw this dark, weird long shadow pulling me and i was just going oh i couldn't wake up like <laughs> it's almost like sleep paralysis yeah uh, so i don't know i've been suffering from those things for a long time i've been trying to research what they are 
so yeah, there's something. There's there's definitely something. Uh, another uh, dimension of something out there beyond our beyond our sight. I, I definitely yeah. think there's something. there's too many reports of it over over life <laughs> people saying they've seen things there has to be there has to be something uh you know and i'm sure yeah there, there doesn't really seem to be like a dip in sightings or anything or, or encounters like it's pretty yeah. consistently throughout history <laughs> i mean i i think there's something there i don't know if it's what you would call your typical you know uh definition of what ghosts are per movies or something like that i don't know right i have no idea but i definitely think there's there's something there I love it. Um, all right, last one: Midsummer or Hereditary? I didn't see them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? That's you're not fine. the only one. We've had we've no. had a couple of people that have not seen either of them. So you're definitely I, not the only I, one. I, yeah, I didn't see them. I was told I should watch Hereditary. You know the weird thing? I don't watch any like new horror stuff. I really just I've stayed. I think the I think I've called like a, a, a line where I went, you know what? I think around after the first scream, I kind of stopped. And that's when I got busy because I had a daughter. I got busy with murder dolls. I got busy. Uh, and when I would sit down to watch horror movies, I think that's when the CGI stuff took over. And I was just, I don't know. So not into it. Kind of, they're kind of hit or miss with me now. You know, I, I, I still watch all the, the remake or the, you know, the new new Halloweens and the new Texas Chainsaw Massacres. And like, I try to watch stuff, but it just doesn't hit me the way the older movies do, you know, like. I'm sure. Know. I feel like just on this conversation alone, I feel like you're probably going to like Hereditary. Um, if you give that one a shot, I feel like you're probably going to like Hereditary. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard several people tell me to watch watch this. And, and again, I. I'm sure I'll get around to it. I have 12 weeks coming up on tour. Is that I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, thanks for uh, joining us. We really do appreciate it. We'll let you get on with your other, uh, with the, with your other uh, obligations today. As, as, where can we find you? You can find me. Uh, <laughs> my, my website is officialwednesday13.com and that has all the links and everything to our instagrams and uh the new album info which is like you said is out october 7th uh we have a new video and a new single coming out uh september 5th uh so that's the second single and then the album's out on the 7th and the third single is out october 5th so you're going to get uh three singles and three videos before the album drops so we're gonna and they're all very very much horror movie and inspired so you get to see the last one we just put out was an exorcist thing so new yeah. next week's a little texas chainsaw massacre maybe maybe a little you know kind of tor torture torture video oh, uh, <laughs> and then right before the album drops we're going to do the the season of the witch halloween three inspired video uh for our song good day to be a bad guy which was which is oh, i love it yeah. Uh, and also that's perfect man because your timing on that is going to be right about when halloween ends is going to be coming out so you're going to be you're going to be piggybacking right on to that so that's well, going to be great <laughs> well, the, well the, we have our fourth single which is i don't be able to make a video for it in time because we're going to be on tour but the fourth single song as we're releasing around that time is actually a song called return to haddonfield it's a whole song about halloween uh yeah originally i wrote it because i was writing last year when i was watching all the halloween movies and uh and i was like whoa maybe we put this out in time maybe we can get it to the producers or something for a soundtrack or blah 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 and well who knows it still isn't we still got a little bit of time but uh if not you'll get a video uh you'll you get that single out as well which should roll well for the holidays then oh yeah oh, yeah man <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, man. This has been really fun. Yeah, this... Really, really appreciate you coming on. And we are absolutely looking forward to the new album. So, uh, yeah, again, thank you for coming on, man. This has been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. It was a great time. Thank you. Right. See you next See you time. Thank All you. right. Have a good day. Bye. So do we want to do some recommendations now that we've just talked to Wednesday 13 on the show? Yeah, let's do some recommendations. Yeah. Do you uh you have anything going on, Graham? Anything you're recommending now that you yeah, watched? Yeah, I got one. Two hundred and fifty real... movies. <laughs> oh no, I watched twenty. I'm not even recommending a movie. Uh, <laughs> I'm recommending uh the Hellbender record. Um, it's oh, called shit, Side yeah, A. Dude. 
uh, all the E's are sixes if you're looking for it. Um, <clears throat> it's the uh, it, it's Zelda and Toby from the Adams family who did uh, the Deeper You Dig and Hellbender, and it's the band Hellbender from the movie Hellbender. Basically, it's them. It fucking rules. It's like they cover basically like all the gam- the whole gamut of witch rock, which is Dude, fucking great. I love yeah. that. Also, if you're into witch rock, check out Witch Fever. They're a new band coming out. Uh, they've got two, three, three singles out for their album, Congregation. Unbelievable. I can't stop listening to them either. So there you go. Witch Rock. There you go. Can we say how cool it is that Witch Rock is like even a genre? <laughs> like, I love that that's even a thing that we have. Like, we, the fact that we get to look forward to that as a rock genre really makes me happy. Yeah. Honestly, and before this past like week, if you had said Witch Rock, I would have been like, yeah, it's probably just kind of psychedelic boring, but it's fucking awesome. Dude, <laughs> whatever they, I'm, whatever dude, these I'm, women are doing. I am fully so here for Witch Rock. Like, absolutely. <laughs> that sounds like something that's right up my alley. Um, so here, I have a funny recommendation. I was doing a comedy show this weekend here in Yakima, and one of the people that came to the show was somebody that I'm going to invite to another goddamn horror podcast here a little bit later on. And he said to me, well, I don't know if I'm that big of a horror fan. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the show. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let's go ahead and see. What's your favorite horror movie? Do you know what this fucking dude threw out to me as his favorite horror movie, which I'm going to recommend to people now? Microwave Massacre. Okay. Nice. Dude, <laughs> I was like, you just recommended Microwave Massacre to me as your favorite horror movie, and you think that you can't come on to a horror podcast? <laughs> come on. Like, dude. Mm-hmm. So definitely yeah, going to recommend you, you that. You have to go underneath the, the, the surface to find Microwave, microwave massacre. massacre. Like that's not yeah. even that's one of those movies that's not even just a deep cut. That's like a deep cut down to the muscle fibers. Like that is sure. That's a deep, deep cut. And also it's a really dope movie. Like it's it's really good. It's fucking schlock fest to the yeah. extreme. And it's one of the best ones around. Um, so yeah, we're definitely gonna recommend microwave massacre, but also again this is something i've recommended before and i'm recommending it again and they're not even a sponsor and eventually they might be but they're not fucking shutter dude they're just oh, yeah. dropping bangers mm-hmm. like just every week they're dropping a new chunk of movies that are just phenomenal like everything from newer ones to older ones just back and forth back and forth and I've recommend like I recommended before uh, what Josiah saw, which was one of the darkest movies that I've seen in as long as I can remember. It's kind of one of those movies that when you watch it, it sticks with you. But also glorious. glorious. I'm real excited to see that. Yeah, Dude, both it is of them. But so yeah, good. glorious looks right up my alley. Yeah, and glorious and what Josiah saw could not be two more different movies if they tried. But they're for sure. Like they're so both so good and they're both shutter originals. So it's like, those are the originals, not on top of the fact that the eighties bangers they're dropping and stuff like that. Um, So those are my movie recommendations and my music recommendation. This one is going to get me some, it's you're, you might get some pushback um, from people on this one. The fucking new Demi Lovato album is good. Holy fuck. Dude, like, yeah, exactly. Holy fuck. That's exactly. That's so what you look it's called, right? Yeah, it's called Holy <laughs> Fuck. And like, I, when I saw that first off, I was like, oh, ha ha. It's going to be like this, you know, like it's going to be some cheeky, you know, like, quote unquote, dark pop album or some shit. And like, she's dressed in bondage gear on a crucifix shaped bed. So first off, I'm like, fucking love you, Demi. And then <laughs> listen, dude, listening to the album, we're talking like old school whole garbage like that type of a vibe with some sleigh bells in there like dude she is banging it out in this album um i gotta listen to it you threw the sleigh bells and and hole yeah dude the first early hole and sleigh bells that's yeah uh, you've got my attention (laughs) the very first song the very first song on the album is called freak and it sounds like it's straight off of one of hole's first albums like in its own way but um yeah it's like this really grungy grimy um you know sort of pop punky thing that she's got going on throughout pretty much the whole album so i was it kind of blew my mind that i was like 
am I just tired because it's nine in the morning? No, I fucking like <laughs> this Demi Lovato album. Like, I, I like, I gave it a good listen. I'm like, all right, fucking a Demi. Like, I'm all right. I'm a, I'm on team Demi Lovato right now for this one. So, yeah, that's my uh, that's my last recommendation. I uh, and a real quick, I, I just want to jump in because you mentioned Shutter Originals, and I swear this movie will probably be a Shutter Original or, or, or exclusive rather. But uh, when the streaming starts. It was like uh, 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 what we do in the shadows meets beyond the mask. It was fucking hysterical Ooh. and gory and just awesome. So look out for that. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Love that. I was going to tell a Demi Lovato story, but now the moment's lost. Uh, my no, now, record... now you have to tell a Demi Lovato story. Well, yeah. You can't just throw that out there and just like back away. No, like um, I made a meme two years ago. I don't want to hear this story anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. I and do. It was a, and it was a viral meme, and then somebody changed it. Uh, like okay. at, like a meme place, like one of those fuck Jerry type places, and then uh, she retweeted their uh, version of it. Remade, v- yeah. And so, like, so every time I hear Demi Lovato, it, like I, I get reminded of my Ooh. fucking ripped off meme. Yeah, like it was, it was, it was, a, it was a fine meme. It was like it was good. It wasn't great, but like it was. I didn't. I listen. I didn't know that in our own ranks we had somebody that got fucked over by the fat Jewish. I didn't know yeah, that, that was going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, fucking fuck Jerry is just like it. I, it actually wasn't fuck Jerry, but it was like a like a, a similar. I, mean, yeah. I can say it's fuck Jerry because like fuck fuck Jerry, you know. But it, it, well, that's <laughs> why I threw that's why I threw out the fat Jewish too because he's also. Which by the way, anybody that thinks that that sounds like I'm being racist, that's actually the dude's name, like on on the internet. So fuck you. Yeah. But right. also, he's terrible. Like he's he's one of those dudes that steals memes and puts his own. Yeah, these on. are just memes stealing people, right? Right. They're yeah, just yeah, like just, and, yeah, and, and that's what they did. Like I I, I went to the I, I followed the chain of the meme until I went to the place where I saw them change it. A little bit like they just put the new, a new picture with the exact same slogan on it but they had both of mine up and uh it was just a picture of like that dude like skateboarding drinking the the cranberry juice and i wrote like i don't know about you but things i can't even remember things things really changed when this guy showed up you know what i mean just kind of like you know so, I, mean? oh, like, I remember yeah. that it was yeah, great yeah and um and oh uh, no we remember then, the lifted one <laughs> <laughs> yep, and then and then they and then they they and then one of those things did it, and then Demi Lovato fucking retweeted it, and it was like, like nah, like this is like my, like my, and then and then that dude, the skateboarding cranberry juice drinking dude, retweeted the Demi Lovato, or reposted the Demi Lovato post. And I was like, man, this is all fucking oh. happening because I kicked over this domino, and then some fucking asshole. Like, imagine like that's what you do. You get up every day and you fucking steal jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's like literally all you do. You know, what I, I, had, mean? Like, I had one meme stolen. I had a Shane McMahon meme stolen. I had a picture of him jumping out of a helicopter saying, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> Somebody stole it. Was it stolen credit. by was it stolen by Shane McMahon? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I would have been fine with that. The name on the contract is McMahon, but it's Shane McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> This was a wrestling oh, was deep good. cut. This that is a wrestling cut. deep cut from me and Graham and Ryan is just I don't know what the fuck you're talking yeah, I about. Know, I, don't know. I don't even know Shane Ryan's McMahon. Just getting angrier. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what's your recommendations aside from being angry at the at, at somebody stealing your <laughs> your meme? Um, let's see. I don't want to recommend Day Shift, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> it'd be no, you just, should. You should. I, I mean, like a because it has a ton of like great hip hop songs in it. Um, it does have know, up and yeah, Snoop Dogg's and, in uh, it. Uh, Snoop Dogg's in it, and uh, he's and Jamie Fox now doing his best Jamie Fox impersonation. That's all he does. <laughs> it's just like he just he's like I show. He's like Burt Reynolds now. Burt Reynolds used to just show up and be Burt Reynolds. You know what I that's mean? That's very like, true. You know, right. and like and it's like uh, Sean Connery is the same way. And now that's what Jamie Fox is doing. They're like, hey, just go do some Jamie Fox shit. Say some Jamie Fox sounding shit, and like, and then that's all. You, that's all you need to do here. Um, like, it, like literally everything's phoned in. But like, I, you know, like I, I just am like, I kind of like horror at that level. Like that kind of like really bad. Like, like I didn't have to think about anything. It was just like. And, you know, the vampires were fucking kind of cool in it. Like, I like, you know, and I think that that's what really ended up, like, kind of, like, gripping me in it is, like, the vampires were similar to, like, 
train to busan zombies you know um yeah they and, were actually yeah yeah and you know cool. and they and you know i mean and like it's a lot of action it's kind of like a video game a lot and uh there's a car chase and sometimes i feel like that's a lost art and it's uh, the it's the vamp and the furious is what yeah, it is. exactly a little bit a little bit yeah and you know and then there was just like i don't know like they played a body count song off the first body count record oh fuck you're right they did yeah yeah, they you know and then uh and then like you know they played some fucking odb and like you know i mean like anyways it's just kind of like a fun film and like um it's like if you like you're gonna go watch it and you're gonna be like why the fuck would you recommend this and it's just like because that's just like sometimes it's just like to fucking lay on the couch and like not have to worry about like if i check my phone that i'm gonna miss some shit you know what i mean like it's <laughs> yeah, like it's it's a 2022 b movie exactly it, it, it so, really yeah. is and, and it's just like and i don't know like it's about a guy trying to save his daughter and you know and, uh, yeah anyways um, those like those uh, like and, kind and of like glossy soul like like those glossy like action uh netflix things are going to become genre films yeah i mean they kind of they kind of <laughs> already are i was thinking about it because it's kind of like bright or it's kind of like you know, I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. like, it's just kind of like in this, like, sort of like, you know, kind of simple sort of, uh, uh, what's that movie with uh, Adam Scott where the kid is evil? Um, uh, Hell Baby? Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, any of those, any of that stuff is like, it's just kind of like fun horror. And like, sometimes I think that like, that's where my soul lives. You know what I mean? Like, I love a good complicated fucking A24 movie or like some cinema or some shit, but like, I don't know, like like a guy working for a union that fucking yanks out fucking vampire teeth and fucking trades them in for money. Eh, it's kind of a cool idea. So uh, I'm little on evil, board. Uh, little evil. That's right. Uh, I'm a, I'm on board with it. You know what I mean? Like it's just like yeah. And more and more horror and more approachable horror that gets more people into horror just means more horror for everyone. A hundred percent. So yeah. I'm you know I'm down with it. And um, I think that's like fuck. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna we're, we're, like okay. So all my anxiety people, all my depressed people, all the people of my ill, I am going to tell you straight up, ignore, actually, I'm just going to say it, fuck what you heard, start a skin care routine, all right, take a, like five minutes every night, wash your face, put on some toner, get some nice serums, like you can get them cheap, put on a moisturizer, you're going to fucking change your life. I'm telling you, I just give you that like five minutes a day, of, like some self pampering, your skin's going to feel better. You're going to look better. And I fucking mean this shit. Like, like don't be like that dude. Who's like, why would I do that? You start doing it. You're going to feel better. I'm as rough and crunchy as anybody. It's but solid advice it. I should take. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I also it, need to do that very badly. And you put on like a little like lotion, you know, or you put on like a lotion in the morning that has like an SPF in it. And like you, you know, you're also taking care of your, like, you're doing something you should be doing. And it's just like, it's just like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Or like for like $6, you can get like a jade roller that you keep in your freezer that you can like roll on your face. And it's like fucking like, it's fucking perfect um so dude yeah. we have one of those in my refrigerator and i've done nothing but talk shit about it now i feel bad yeah you no, should because like... it's because like you literally like if you roll it like on your eye bags and stuff like that you're gonna be like holy fuck this is amazing fuck. like this is like yo you know, what is that send me a link to what is the name of whatever that is it's just that a jade great. just a jade roller just it's yeah it. it's not even like a brand it's just it's literally a jade roller like jade, jade roller. like the stone Yep. Don't even know what the fuck. You guys are rubbing stones on your heads? Awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm rubbing stones on my face. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm I'm about, love it. I'm Listen, about we were the... talking about witch rock before, and now we're fucking That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm telling you. Like, And then you and you start to do this shit, and you're like, oh, wow. Like, And then you'll, you'll find myself like touching my face and be like, oh, it's so soft. You know what I mean? And so, um, uh, and you know what? Like, um, but I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, they will try to tell you, like, somehow, like, taking care of yourself isn't tough you know but like the reality is is when i take care of myself that's the strongest i am so i'm gonna leave you with that um anyways um thanks everybody uh come back and tune in uh thanks for uh, tuning in for our short uh, short and sweet wednesday 13 episode please go check out wednesday and uh thanks everybody for coming in start fires break glass break glass <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.